Hello. Hiya. Hi. Hiya. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Hello. Ciao. Hello. Stress treaty. Hello. Hey. Hello. Push on date. Aloha. Hello. 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 Dobri dien. Hello. 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 Hey, Mutilavino. Hello. Welcome to Nelson College London. And a very warm welcome to this, your Nelson College induction process. During this video, you will find that we approach some of the sections in two different ways. Firstly, we include information that will be useful to you when we are all able to return to the college premises. Secondly, we also discuss some aspects of your college life under the current lockdown restrictions. Once we're able to return to a socially distanced and safe college, these measures will, of course, revert to our standard processes. My name is Bruce McLaughlin, and I'm the manager of the Knowledge Exchange Centre, or KEC for short. A little bit more on the Knowledge Exchange Centre for you later on. After these welcomes and introductions, there'll be some important safety information about your life with us at the college. Then we're going to tell you a little bit about Nelson College London itself. That will be followed by some details about the specific programme that you have signed up to be a part of. We'll have some data and IT information. That will be followed by a section on human resources and student support. We've got a little section on the college's libraries and then, as promised, a little bit about the Knowledge Exchange Centre before we have a few closing remarks. Following this induction and indeed throughout your life with us at the college, you may want to find further information and we've got a number of great places where you can do that. Of course, there's the college's website itself where you can find lots of information about your life as a student, about us as a college. Obviously there's things like our policies and our procedures. There are a number of resources and there's a really useful who's who section. In that, you'll find photographs of all the members of staff together with their job titles and indeed their email addresses. As you'll find that all of us here at the college love to hear directly from you, our students. We do have an open door policy. Next, I'd point you towards our YouTube channels. There are two of those, one of which is the main college one and one of which is for the Knowledge Exchange Centre. I really would strongly recommend that you subscribe to both, as there's content being published all the time. You'll find things to do with your course itself and the subjects that you're learning about, There'll be general information about studying as a whole, but also there's things there that will help you with your career planning journey. Lastly, we're very active on social media, so do feel free to subscribe to us on any of the platforms that you also follow. During these presentations, you may find that you have some supplementary questions that you'd like to ask us. If that's the case, then Below this, you'll see a little comment section in the YouTube video and feel free to ask any questions that you would like to using that comment facility. We've got a number of colleagues who are sitting online waiting for those comments to come in so that we can respond to you. Of course, you can still follow up with your lecturers or with key academic staff or key administration staff once these inductions are over. Next, some key safety information. At the Gantz Hill campus, we have a number of first aid providers and indeed fire marshals. I shan't read through all the names on the list, although obviously you can see them on the screen there, but you'll find that those names appear in posters all around the college so that you can familiarise yourselves with those people as you're getting to know people around the college. In terms of first aid kits, you'll find those in four locations within Gantz Hill. One is located on the reception desk on the ground floor. We then have a second one, which is on the first floor in the staff kitchen. 
there's a one on the third floor which is in the student common area and then lastly there's one on the fifth floor which is in the small pantry area near the classrooms on the fifth floor. We have toilet facilities located on every floor of the college. You'll find these at opposite ends of the corridor and they alternate between floors. So if the corridor that you're standing in has a gents in front of you and you're looking for the ladies, you know you're going to be the opposite end of the corridor and indeed vice versa. We take fire of course very seriously at the college. We test our fire alarms very regularly at 11 o'clock every Thursday and we also carry out the occasional unannounced fire drill. So if you do hear the fire bell ringing at any other time other than that, that Thursday test, then do please proceed to leave the building using the stairwells and please do not try to take the lifts. If you're in the Gantz Hill campus, then your assembly point is in the Burger King car park, which you'll find if you turn left as you leave the entrance of the college. If you're in the Ilford campus, then the assembly point is just outside the building in front of the college. In the Ilford campus, first aiders are Shiraj Islam, Amir Mahmood, Cameron Islam, Ramila Joseph, Tatiana Russell and Emran Islam. And their fire marshals are Petra Aksu, Tahir Udin, Ina Zaporojan and Tatiana Russell. You'll see on the chart on the slides the rooms in which all of these people uh, are located. First aid boxes in the Ilford campus may be found in three locations on the fourth floor, at reception, outside room 406 and outside the kitchen. There's a fourth box which is located in the IT lab on the second floor. Toilets are located in the stairwell on each of the floors, although those on the fourth floor are reserved for staff only. There are kitchen facilities available for students on both the second and fourth floors, although regrettably during the current pandemic those kitchens are both closed to students for social distancing purposes. I would now like to hand over to Professor Geoffrey Alderman, who is the college principal and who has a few words of welcome for you. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you as a student of Nelson College London. The mission of Nelson College is to offer access to higher education to people from the widest possible range of backgrounds, enabling them to transform their lives through the acquisition of the knowledge and skills that they need to succeed in their chosen careers. With that in mind, my task and that of my staff is to ensure that your time at the college is marked by a high quality learning experience so that your independent learning skills are fully developed with all the support, advice and encouragement we can give you, making learning enjoyable as well as meaningful. I encourage you to review this handbook which sets out the standards of service which Nelson College aims to provide, what the college expects of you, and the quality of the service that you are entitled to expect from us. If you have any problems concerning your programme of study, please do not hesitate to contact the relevant department. Meanwhile, I would like to take this opportunity to wish you every success in your academic career at Nelson College. My name is David Douglas, I'm the Head of Programme Delivery for Nelson College London. Nelson College is registered in both England and Wales and we have two campuses, one in Ilford and the other in Gants Hill. The college is recognised as highly trusted by UKVI, though we do not provide any programmes currently for Tier 4 students. We offer the following courses at Nelson College London. HND Business and HND Hospitality Management with our awarding body Pearson's. Also in conjunction with London Metropolitan University we offer our foundation degrees FDA Business and FDA Hospitality Management, 
our BA top-up degrees, again in Business and Hospitality Management, and two MA International Business postgraduate degrees, one in Management and the other in Hospitality. Your progress in studying at Nelson College may start with one of our Level 5 programmes, either HND or indeed one of our Foundation degrees. Both of these programmes are of a two-year duration. After this, you may decide that you wish to progress to our Level 6 programme, either BA Honours Hospitality Management or BA Honours Business. And finally, our Level 7 programme, MA International Business in either Management or Hospitality. I'd now like to introduce you to the Executive Board of Governance for Nelson College London. In the first instance, we have our three founding directors, Mr. Nazim Udin, Mr. Atikul Islam and Mr. Shiraj Islam. Each director also holds a senior management position within the college. Mr. Udin as Head of Quality Assurance, Mr. Atikul Islam as Head of Administration, Finance and HR and Mr. Shiraj Islam as Head of Marketing and Work-Based Learning. Then we have our Principal, Professor Jeffrey Alderman and Alexandra Osinagova who is the Head of Academic Services and Safeguarding. Thank you for that. I'd now like to hand over to Dr. Mudassa Mahmood. Mudassa is the Academic Manager for HND programmes and is also the Programme Leader and Chief IV for HND Business. Thank you, Bruce, and a very warm welcome to all of you. I'm here to give you a brief overview of your programs, your lecturers, academic team, and admin team in Ilford campus. So starting with the academic team, your academic team consists of academic manager, which is myself, academic administrators, and student support lecturers. Muhammad Hifster, Chala Duan, Irasal Masjibashio, and Nadia Kalam, they are academic administrator. Muhammad Hifster is also an examination officer. He is the one who collects your degrees and your transcript from the Pearson. So when you complete your course, you can contact him to collect your certificates from him. Zainab Masir, Mal Shaheen and Ayumaid Usatiku, they are student support lecturers. This slide consists of a long list of lecturers who might be teaching you in this term, in the next term or, or term after next term, or in any one of these two terms over the next two years. I'm going to read out your name to let you know how to pronounce them so that nobody gets offended. So starting with top left, Abab Yousu, Abdul Wahid, Usman Koli, Razio Chaudhry, Zafar Iqbal, Mohammed Nadar, Chris Kenhai, Naz Shaheen, Mazhar Iqbal, Sundus Baig, Mokamal Haq, Nazia Hussain, Mohsin Kalu, Nathaniel Okaduga, Mariam Bhatt, Oscar Bimpong, John Benin, Delini Tushara, Maliha Asif, Adnan Taha, and Ismail Garat. On this slide, we have a list of admin staff. Rumila Joseph, who is the registrar of admin team. Anila Khan, she is attendance officer in Elford campus. Ina Zaporo John, she is receptionist as well as an administrator. Kiara Surit, she is Safeguarding Disability Support and Student Welfare Officer. Naba Rashid, she is Admission and Fee and Attendance Officer. Imran Islam, he is also an Administrator, Fee and Attendance Officer. You can find the further details on the college's website. Now a bit about your program, HND Business. HND stands for Higher National Diploma. It's a two years program which consists of two levels. Year one is level four and year two is level five. This is a BTEC program, so your diploma or your certificate is awarded by an organization called the Pearson. The college is mainly a tuition provider here. The diploma or certificate awarded by the Pearson is recognized by almost all of the universities in the UK and other universities in other countries outside the UK. There are about 140 countries which accept Pearson's qualification. At the end of this program, 
you will have studied 15 units and you would have earned 240 credits. As I explained earlier, your program HD Business has been divided into two years, or it's a two years program, and these two years have been divided into different academic terms. There are three academic terms in year one and three academic terms in year two. Your first term in year one will start in April and end in July. Your second term will start in September and end in December. And your third term will start in January and end in March. Now, each one of these academic terms have been divided into 10 to 12 weeks. We teach or we undertake teaching for up to eight weeks. Last two weeks are generally dedicated to revision or submission of your assignments. In each one of the week, you will receive 20 to 30 guided learning from the college. The teaching will take place in form of lectures, seminar or sport classes. You can also get further academic information about your module from the Pearson website called Higher Nationals. On this slide, you can see the list of modules which you will be studying in your year one. And you can also see the terms in which you will be studying all the modules. So in your term one, which starts in April, you will be studying business and the business environment, marketing essentials, human resource management. In your second term, which starts in September, you will be studying management and operation, management accounting, and managing a successful business project. In your third term, which starts in January, you will only study two modules, which are business law and entrepreneurship and small business management. Now, you might have noticed that each of these modules is a 15 credit module, which are taught in year one. While the module which will be taught in year two, they might have different credits. I've explained that on the next slide. This slide consists of the list of modules which you'll be studying in your second year. Now, as I said, the, the cycle of your terms will repeat every year. So in your second year, your first term will start in April. In this term, you'll be studying three modules, developing individuals, teams, and organization, organizational behavior, and business strategy. In your second term, which starts in September, you will be studying research project, human resource, value, and contribution to organizational success, and international marketing. In your third term, which starts in January, you will be studying research project once again, and pitching and negotiation skills. Now, you might have noted over here that the module research project has been repeated twice. This is, more, this is because this module has got higher credit. This module has got 30 credits, that's why it has been divided over two terms. Now the delivery of the program. For this term only, the common guideline says that we have to deliver all the classes online only. But that, that is just for this term, April to July 2021 term. In next term, which start in September, the classes might take place in college. Or you might attend class-based session. You can find further information and updates on the college's website about the college's classes and college's policies as per the government policies. Generally, the delivery takes place in class-based sessions through various approaches which consist of lectures, videos, presentation, group works, work experience, personal tutors, visits to different organizations, and guest speakers. As far as assessment of your learning is concerned, it will be assessed using a number of vehicles which have been listed down below. It consists of assignments, portfolio or projects. Now you can see the word limit has been restricted for each one of these vehicles. So the minimum word count is 2,500 and maximum word count is 3,000. But it's not compulsory. There is no such restriction on going over the maximum threshold or going below the minimum threshold. As long as you address all the relevant criteria, the word limit do not matter here. So this word limit is just for guidelines. Um, the assessment also takes place in form of PowerPoint presentation, which means you students will have to prepare PowerPoint slides and have to present them in class in front of lecturers or students. Um, other assessment vehicles consist of storyboards, academic posters and fact sheets, self-reflection of your learning and your work experience, logbook of your experience, and practical work. 
you will be handed the assignment brief in the first two weeks of the beginning of each term. However, you will have to submit your assignment by the end of your academic term, week 10 or week 11. The deadlines are given on each one of the assignments brief which you'll be working on each term. We expect all of our students to pass their assignments in their first attempt. However, there might be still a handful of students who might not be able to pass in their first attempt. We give them one more chance to submit their assignment and pass it. However, in their resubmission, the grades will be kept at pass, which means that they cannot get merit or distinction. Students can also not resubmit assignments to get a higher grade. So for instance, if a student has submitted their assignment and originally the grade was passed, that student cannot resubmit assignment to get a higher grade. If a student fails one assignment twice, after that he or she will have to redo the module, which means that the student will have to attend the classes again and work on new assignment brief. And even in this case, the grade will be kept at pass. So that student who failed one assignment twice, the student who has to retake all of the classes cannot get a higher grade. So please try your best to achieve a pass in your first attempt or to, to complete your assignments in your first attempt so that you can get higher grades. We have got a team of dedicated personal tutors who are there to help you with your academic related queries. So for instance, when you're working on your assignments and you're unsure whether you're going in the right direction or not, you can send the draft to them, they will review it and give you the feedback on the quality of your work produced as well as developmental feedback. So please make sure you do contact them from time to time. And please make sure you do make use of all the other colleagues' resources as well, which have been explained during this presentation by my other colleagues. Do make use of them, they are there for you to use. I hope I have been able to provide you all the necessary information which you need for next two years. However, if you need any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me or any other member of staff. I'll be looking forward to see you in the college in class-based sessions or online sessions soon. Goodbye for me. Thank you so much to allow me to, uh, to take a part. Uh, hi, my name is Kiran. My full name is Koshit Alum, Kiran. I like to be called Kiran. Okay, uh, so I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. So I am a uh, assistant IT and data manager and I'm responsible, responsible for uh, data and IT and also I'm going to talk about something your virtual learning platform which is we called VLE so I'm going to talk about in this so um, so what is VLE actually uh, here for you can learn uh, you can access your uh, your class materials in online and also you can come into the college and physically access our library other parts of it so um, because of these unprecedented situations we introduce our online classes so you can access from your home or if you come to the uh, in, uh, in college then you can access as well so at uh, the VLE is meant for is a learning platform designed to provide you a secure and integrated systems where you can personalize your learning environment so as you can see uh, in the screen, uh, there is a login page where you can connect with the NCL Office 365, which is we newly introduced it to, uh, to, to access your online classes. So you will be provided your username and password and college email ID actually, then you can access the online classes. We will show you this once you all things is done. Okay, so next thing uh, I'm gonna talk about um, how we work it out. So some couple of things you need to make sure you shouldn't share your username and password to anyone because this is your um, where you can submit your assignment. Uh, in this college, we don't have any exam, so all you can do to write your assignment and submit to the VLE, uh, where it will be uh, tested or you know these um, uh, tested by Turnitin software, which is uh, test your uh, plagiarism. The plagiarism is for, um, this means uh, did you copy or uh, how much you copy from online resources. So your teacher or lecturer will talk about this in this classroom. So um, one second, thank you so much. That's all from me. 
uh, you can have my email ID or my phone number will be provided to you if you have any problem to your learning app, virtual learning environment and also IT problem, um, I will be with your assistant. Thank you so much and once again, good luck. Thank you. And I will pass to my next colleague Tatiana, he or she will tell you about human resources. So thank you so much. Bye bye. It's now my pleasure to introduce Tatiana Russell. Tatiana is our HR, Health and Safety, Disability Support and Student Welfare Manager. On matters of student welfare, Tatiana is supported by Lucia Ismail and Chiara Suarez. At Nelson College London, we strongly believe in equality, diversity, fairness and respect for all. We are committed to ensuring equality of opportunity for our students and staff. The College does not discriminate against individuals with disability, mental health condition, specific learning difficulties or long-term conditions. Any disability disclosure will be dealt with confidentially and sensitively. The College is committed to addressing any individual support requirements and making reasonable adjustments to ensure that students enjoy college experience and achieve their full potential. Such adjustments will be determined during the one-to-one -one meeting with the Disability Support Officer and with support of evidence submitted by the applicant or student. It is the responsibility of an applicant or student to obtain appropriate medical or psychological evidence and submit it to the college. Evidence must not be more than four months old, must be written by a medical professional in accessible English. Any evidence should, wherever possible, identify specific areas of difficulty in relation to study-related problems. Students with disabilities or learning difficulties might be offered blended learning sessions to support their studies. You will receive personalised timetable for online study, support from the blended learning support lecturer and extra activities to support the learning. The student welfare team at Nelson College London supports students with disability as well as care leavers. A care leaver is any adult who has spent time in care as a child, including those who have been adopted, estranged and unaccompanied asylum seekers. Our committed and determined staff support and help care leavers to build their skills and get into the employment world. A care leaver will receive guidance and support during the application process, a pre-sessional induction event, on-course support, financial support and one-to-one -one sessions with the student welfare officer. The college can offer financial help to all students. Students who experience unexpected financial difficulties due to circumstances which could not have been predicted at the start of their course, can apply for the NCL Hardship Fund. The College can offer the NCL Bursary Package to students with disabilities or care leavers. Uh, resources that you will be able to find there. The detail on this slide is of course only applicable once we are able to return to the college premises but what I'd like to detail for you is some of the facilities that you'll be able to take advantage of once that is possible within our library premises. Firstly it's important to note that we have an inventory of over 1000 books that are available for our students to borrow. You'll find your core and recommended textbooks that are detailed in your unit handbooks within the library. As students, you also have access to Redbridge Library, which is in Ilford, and of course, other public libraries in the area. You'll get access to academic journals. For each of the units or modules that you'll be studying, we produce individual study manuals, which you will be able to access via the college's virtual learning environment or VLE. 
Printed copies of these can be made available upon request. In addition to our library, it's also worth noting that there is a computer lab. We have free Wi-Fi on every single floor and within the library there are also printing facilities which students are of course welcome to access. Just to remind you that the facilities we've just been running through will of course only become available once we're able to safely return to the college. Hello everyone, my name is Kashka Rollins and I'm the Employment and Workplace Manager here at the KC. My role is to basically make your career journey that more manageable and of course enjoyable. Here at the KC we pride ourselves on all things career related and we hope to bring you endless opportunities. We know you guys are here to get the best job and we'd like to support you with that. We'll do stuff like CV writing workshops, LinkedIn workshops, we'll even provide you with career advisors to help you along the way. We know you're getting tons of information today, so why not check out our KC website and also our social media platforms. For now though, here's Varuni who will now take over. Thank you so much. Thanks Kashka. Welcome to Nelson College. My name is Varuni. I am part of the KEC team. The learning takes place in so many different and exciting ways. One of those is the workshops we organize. We invite industry experts to deliver workshops to discuss how theories and the concepts you learned in the classroom are applied in the real world. We also organize field trips. These are designed to bridge the gap between the classroom and hands-on experience. We try to give you a unique experience by traveling to the venue and spending time discovering how to link those theoretical concepts you learn in the classroom in a practical environment. During the current pandemic, KC has of course kept the safety and welfare of our students upmost in all of the things that we do. We therefore initiated changes such as creating workshops as virtual events or videos. We also held off the arranging of field trips until it was safe to reintroduce these. We are certain that this would not impact on your overall experience with Nelson College. In fact, in many cases, we firmly believe that it has enhanced the experience as we adjust to the new normal. Thank you. As Bruce said in his introduction, subscribe to both Nelson College and Knowledge Exchange Center YouTube channels. There are many short videos that will provide you skills for life, those range from te technical tips to career advice. I would recommend you check this out. We also produce a series of publications on various topics to help you learning, researching and life beyond the college. They are in e-format so you can read them on the go. That's all from me. Looking forward to meeting you all soon. Enjoy your journey with us. Thank you. I would now like to hand over to Professor Geoffrey Alderman the Prevent Duty derives from the 2015 Counter-Terrorism Act. It applies to all relevant higher education bodies, which for this purpose are legally monitored by our regulator, the Office for Students. Relevant higher education bodies, of course, includes Nelson College London. The duty places a legal obligation upon Nelson College London to assist the government in carrying out its Prevent Strategy. This strategy, following government guidelines, is designed to respond to the ideological challenge of terrorism by preventing people being radicalised through extremist ideologies. And extremism is defined under the Act as vocal or active opposition to fundamental British values, including democracy, the rule of law, individual liberty and mutual respect, and tolerance of different faiths and beliefs. Accordingly, the College has adopted its own Prevent Strategy, which sits alongside the Code of Practice on Freedom of Speech. Both have been approved by the College Board of Governance. To assist us in this work, we've also established a Prevent Steering Group, which meets once every three months. The Redbridge Prevent Education Officer is a member of this group, and the College itself is a member of the London Prevent Network established by the Department for Education. That group has regular meetings and of course we attend these meetings. We also periodically here at the college carry out a risk assessment to ensure that our strategy is continuing to be effective and fit for purpose. 
Now, it's also important to note that PREVENT is part of a wider college safeguarding initiative. The college is passionate about safeguarding its learners and staff and aims to protect adults at risk from all types of abuse and harm. We take all safeguarding concerns, including suspicion, seriously and will report concerns promptly to the relevant authorities. Should any student experience any safeguarding is issue, this should be reported immediately to their lecturer or directly to the designated safeguarding officer. The details are on our website so that suitable help and support can be provided. I do hope you'll all look at our college website for further details of all these important initiatives. The Office for Students, or the OFS, has replaced the Higher Education Funding Council for England from 2018. It is now the main regulator of higher education, holding providers to account for the quality of teaching they provide. The Office for Students' primary aim is to ensure that English higher education is delivering positive outcomes for students, and that students from the past, the present and the future. Students from all backgrounds, particularly those most disadvantaged, should be able to access, succeed and progress from higher education into either further study or employment. I am proud to tell you that Nelson College was one of the first in the London area to be registered at the approved fee cap level, the highest level of registration available. Our access and participation plan outlining our targets and commitments for maximising student experience, is available to view now on the College website. Nelson College London's Student Protection Plan is a document which sets out what actions the College will take to minimise any impact on the continuity of study for our students. This includes examples of what events may trigger the plan, such as the closure of a course, the closure of a campus or location, the discontinuation of a discipline, or market exit for the college. This plan will be kept up to date and will reflect on any changes or events which may require a change to the plan or the actions within it. At Nelson College London, we commit to being open and transparent should any risk to the continuity of your studies arise and inform you in a timely manner. We commit to taking reasonable steps to protecting your studies should we discontinue a course or discipline, close a location, a building or campus, where a course is taught or close altogether. We commit to considering your views before deciding to implement any substantial changes to a course or discontinuing it or stop teaching a discipline or closing a location. We commit to taking into consideration the needs of all our students and the impact on them of any proposed changes and protective measures. We also commit to informing the OFS of any changes that may necessitate a review of the plan or any of the measures contained within it. Please note that copies of our access and participation plans and our student protection plan are available on the College website. The college is a very student-focused college. Each year, for each group of students, we select two student representatives. In fact, these are selected by their colleagues on the courses. These student representatives attend most of the management committee meetings in the college, including the programme committees, the academic board, the academic planning committees and the student representative committee, where all student views and opinions are considered. Part of the benefits for students attending these meetings and being a student representative is that we do pay a small amount for attendance and we do provide free training throughout the course of the year. Well, there we are. That more or less concludes our induction video. I do hope that you found all the speakers both interesting and indeed informative and that you've learnt lots more about the college and that the course that you will be attending. Don't forget all of those useful sources of information that I mentioned for you. Feel free to browse those at your leisure. But of course, don't also forget that 
If you do have any questions that you need to ask, please feel free to contact people from marketing who you first met or indeed your college lecturers once you've started the course or of course anybody from the academic or administration teams. Look forward to seeing you in and around the college in the future. Thank you very much for your time and attention to this video. As a college, we have a wide range of resources that are available to you as our students. You can find details of all of these in this informative video that we've created. If you type the link https colon forward slash forward slash y o u t u stop b e forward slash capital P capital D lowercase q capital Z number five capital N lowercase n capital A capital I capital A capital U into your browser it will take you straight to that video. To make life even simpler, if you read the commentary underneath this video, you will find that we have inserted that link in the text below and you'll be able to click directly onto it. I hope you find this a very useful resource and indeed all of our social media activity which is there to keep you, our students, well informed. This presentation remains copyright of Nelson College London who retain all rights in respect of its use.